Hello and welcome to Dream Infinity Studios um, tutorial on typography using Illustrator and uh, this is going to be a tutorial on how uh, much control you have over your type using Illustrator's um, type tools. Um, first uh, we're going to start off this tutorial by laying down two different uh, ways of laying out type. Uh, one way is just to click on your um, document just like that and then type. And then another way is to uh, lay out a text field of where you want the type to go. Now, um, it really depends on how you laid out the type. Um, it actually changes the way you could edit or format um, your type in Illustrator. The first way I did, um, if you just click on a document and lay out your type, what happens is when you actually get these coordinate controls over here and move it it actually move um, scales it for you if you just do the um, middle handles it stretches the type just like that um, when you lay it the type out in the text field what happens is that it doesn't um, scale when you change the side um, move the handles um, the difference is is that when you type, um, you, this is for basically to lay out your type, and it doesn't change the scale for you. If you want to change the scale, you have to change the points, just like that. Now, um, it doesn't really matter except um, how you lay your type anyway. Um, it's just a matter of uh, preference sometimes. But this method is like the second method is the best way, so you can edit and you can actually assign where the um, type is going to go. This is main, primarily used for uh, page layouts. Um, if you're not using InDesign or Cork Express, you want to, and you're using uh, Illustrator to lay out your type, this is the way to go. Um, so that's just one of the ways. Now we're going to delete this part. We're going to actually use the second one, and um, we're going to go over these controls with the Illustrator palette right here. Now, to change the font, I mean it's pretty um, obvious. You can change the font using uh, you can change the font using the drop-down list on the very top right here, um, but there's all these other controls over here that not many people mess around with and he, I am here today to explain to you what these tiny functions actually do. Now this right here is the standard uh, tool to change your font size. I mean from 18 to 72. Um, you can go higher than that. Um, if you want it, you just gotta type it in um, and that's how you change your um, font size. Now in terms of the other tools, this is called the uh, letting control. Um, basically, letting is used um, when you have a lot of um, paragraphs uh, going um, in the document. Now, again, this is a page layout technique, especially when you use layout. I'm going to take this uh, paragraph right here and then bring it over. And I'm going to drop down type to maybe 14. Maybe 16. Now when you have this type going, um, this is what the uh, letting does, is it closes in the, um, the baseline of the text together or further apart. Um, it depends on your preference, depending on uh, what you're work, um, you know, what kind of project you're working with obviously, but you, you get a little sense of a good little space or maybe you want to close it in together and kind of be experimental, it's up to you. So that is what the letting is for. Now we're going to go back to the big text. So I can show you what the other controls do. These other, these two controls over here on the bottom, um, they're basically for scaling. Um, I don't really recommend you using it. It's really not a professional way to kind of scale your text. Um, basically, what I mean is when you let's say I want to do two hundred percent. Well, it gives me a two hundred percent stretch. It's really ugly. You, I mean, in terms of graphic design practice, you never, rarely want to stretch out an existing font um, to make it look. The way you want it. For instance, let's just say I want the type to be, you know, futuristic or whatever. Let's stretch it out. You know, oh, there we go. You know, I mean, we have it worked out here. I mean, it doesn't really, you know, it's not a really good design um, practice to do that. Um, if you're going to use, if you want like a stretched out um, text, then you know, go and look for a stretched out font, a font that's already designed that way, and that's the most professional um, way to approach a stretched out uh, looking text, and not so much of, of editing an existing one. Now, this is the vertical one, and obviously it's the same as horizontal, except this one stretches out up and down. Um, let's kind of go 
forget about that. Um, this is called the kerning, um, this section right here. Now the kerning is really, actually really important. Now for this example, I'm gonna put the type close together, um, just like that. And the kerning is to adjust spacing between two letters. Um, this is really important in a graphic design because not all fonts are designed to even the space out um, within the text. I mean, you can tell here that the I and the T, and especially T and the Y, are much closer together than the I and the M are. Um, and this is the kind of, this is where you come in and change that. Now, if we want to be consistent with these two spaces, like for instance the D and the R, or the R and E, you need to adjust the rest of them. And we're going to do that with the kerning tool, which is right here. You could click on the up arrow or the down arrow adjusting the, the distance or you can just hit uh, hold alt and use the key uh, the arrow keys to change the spacing now as you can tell I'm changing it right now so the spacing between two um, spacing throughout the whole text looks pretty e even now this is it, this takes a lot of practice to have the eye to kind of visually be uh, making everything look like you know perfect but you know it just takes practice I mean I'm not even perfect at it till this day but that's what kerning does this is called the kerning control and you know this looks a little better than how it was before uh, in terms of the spacing between two letters now the next part this is called the tracking the tracking moves every text um, as a whole so for instance if I have a selected and I change the tracking to 50 it changes all, all of it for me so in terms of typographic style or the approach that you're going, maybe you wanted a really spaced out type, for instance like this. Or maybe you want it to be really close. I mean we could go negative too, um, to get it really, really close, for instance. Now, you know, it doesn't really work out so well with all the eyes in this text, but you know, you kind of get the picture. Now these controls right here are for Japanese characters and it's not really too um, important in this um, tutorial. Um, it kind of works just like the kerning and tracking, but it's again, it's for Japanese characters, so let's skip over that um, and go to, go over here. And this is called the um, baseline um, height control, or baseline shift, I mean. And th what this does, basically, is it changes the baseline based on where you select the text. For instance, if I want to drop down a .com, I mean, I could make a separate text that says .com and drop it down manually, or I could use the baseline shift um, control and drop it down. If I want to drop it down, it's a negative um, element. So basically, I need to put a negative value. So for instance, if I take, um, if I want to drop this down to negative 40, there you go, it drops it down. If I want to bring it up, um, it's obviously the positive value, just like that. Again, it's just the typographic uh, control element. This is the rotate tool. Uh, it doesn't rotate the whole text, but it rotates what you selected. Now, you can rotate the whole entire text if you want, um, the whole entire thing, in the same angle if you wanted to, just like that. Or you could select a portion of it and just um, change the angle, like that. So that's the um, rotate tool. I, um, I don't really use it too much, but you know, it's, it's there. For people that are interested in using it now the other tools uh, there's these two buttons right here the underline tool and the strike through and these are another um, tools that you can use um, if you have to um, you don't have to draw a line on the text to you know get a line going um, or a strike through going again um, illustrator really offers a lot of um, powerful typographic tools and um, it's really important to kind of understand uh, how the, all these things function because it will give you a greater um, control as a designer and your work in the future. Thanks for watching.